This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay, we're picking up where we left off before Christmas with our blues guitar series. Basically, if you've been watching these videos, you know that I've been kind of giving a little bit of a, a guide to playing blues lead guitar. And we've covered some fair ground at the moment. You know, we've looked at using the Dorian mode, getting a little bit mixolydian and uh, and minor pentatonic and, um, you know, a little bit of arpeggio stuff last time. But I thought it would be remiss of me to not include in this series um, probably one of the most important topics in playing a great blues guitar solo which is phrasing we kind of touched on this in the uh, in the first video way back whenever I did it you know when we were just looking at the minor pentatonic but I thought I'd dedicate an entire video to it today I've done this topic before but it has been a while and I thought it was worth revisiting it as part of this series coming up next you're going to hear me play a guitar solo uh, just using simple pentatonic ideas and uh, then I'm going to explain to you what I was doing in terms of putting those notes together from the scale into things that sounded like, you know, musical, uh, bluesy kind of phrases. Here it is. Okay then, that solo that you just heard me play contained no fancy arpeggios or exotic scales or clever note choices. It was all, apart from one last note at the very end, just using the G minor pentatonic or the G blues scale, which is just the G minor pentatonic with an added note. Basically, just various different patterns of this around the neck. <laughs> That's all I was using, okay, as I say, in various patterns. The emphasis here is very much on the phrasing, the um, basically the way that you group the notes together to create interesting musical statements. And this is um, a concept that I've done before in a video, but I thought I'd kind of revisit it for this blues series. What I'm doing is I'm using lyrics to um, act as the basis of my guitar phrases, my guitar licks. Uh, let's take a look at the lyrics to, for instance, Jimi Hendrix's Red House. Okay, the first line of that song goes, there's a red house over yonder. And I kind of echo that with a guitar phrase, there's a red house over yonder. 
there you go. You can hear how that pattern of syllables can be reflected in a guitar phrase. I'm not trying to um, play the actual melody that appears on that recording. I'm just kind of approximating the pattern of syllables. So you've got, there's a red house over yonder, you've just heard that. Uh, that's where my baby stays. Again, kind of copying that um, first you know, kind of line of the song. So here's what it sounded like over the backing track when I did that. And then uh, a, a thing that happens in many, many, if not most blues songs is that when you go up to the four chord in bar five, um, you play the same uh, thing again, or you sing the same line again. So once again, there's a red house over yonder. That's where my baby stays. Here's how it sits over that four chord. And again, I'm not even playing the same melody as I played the first time. I'm playing the same licks. I'm just aping the um, the actual pattern of syllables that occur in the, the lyrical content of the song. And then I just complete the verse in exactly the same way by kind of, as I say, approximating the lyrical rhythm. Here it is. And you may have noticed um, just in that uh, in those examples there and in the original solo, in between each of those lines of lyrics, as we'll think of them, there are little guitar fills. Um, in much the same way as, you know, Hendrix, when he sang the song, would sing a line and then do kind of a response on the guitar. It's basic sort of call and response type phrasing. So you might get, there's a red house over yonder, that's where my baby stays, and then a fill... And then the same line again. I'll try and approximate that now. So you could hear, hopefully there, that there was, um, you know, the line of lyric, then a little bit of a fill, and then we went back to um, the same kind of phrasing pattern for that, that line of lyric again. So here is the entire second uh, verse of the song where we're kind of using the wait a minute, something's wrong uh, verse, basically that one. Here it all is, and you can see the lyrics on screen, and you can see what I'm playing the fills as well. And notice how that final fill just kind of extended and went on a bit. This is a great way of uh, continuing the momentum. If you're playing, you know, jamming with a band, this is a way that you can signal to the band that, okay, I'm not quite done yet. I'm going to take another chorus and, and go through another 12-bar sequence. Uh, Eric Clapton does this all the time when he's kind of, you know, wanting to kind of push on through another 12 bars. He'll he'll kind of take that final fill of the um, of the 12-bar sequence and, and extend it. And then we go into the uh, the final 12-bar sequence where basically I switch tack a little bit. Uh, I go from Red House to uh, I'm co actually quoting these lyrics from uh, Crossroads Blues. You know, uh, went down to the crossroads, fell down to my knees, all that sort of stuff. Here's that final verse and see if you can kind of spot where I'm uh, doing 
the lyrics and where I'm doing the fills in between the lyrics. And then you'll hear the final note at the end, which is, as I say, the only note from outside the minor pentatonic we're actually resolving to um, a note from the G7 chord at the end. Here it is. And I was, of course, using this guitar, which you probably recognise by now. This is my utterly fantastic uh, Scott Guitars UK John Robson signature model. Um, properly, properly high-end boutique guitar for not much more than you'd pay for, say, something like a, a top-end Epiphone or, you know, kind of PRS SE. Uh, the link is in the uh, description down below if you're interested in checking out fantastic guitars. Can't recommend them highly enough. Anyway, uh, onto the solo. Yes, there is a, a full tab in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a jam track to play along with, and that clip that you saw of me there, kind of playing the solo and explaining what's going on. Where is all of that, I hear you ask? Well, as you know, it's up on my Patreon page. There's the address, and the link is in the description. It's only $3 a month, and you get all of these uh, extra resources that go along with these YouTube lessons, plus some exclusive Patreon content as well. Thank you to everybody who is uh, taking part in that. Much, much appreciated. And that is pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, uh, found it useful, helpful, informative, and maybe even a little bit inspiring, then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it? Thank you to everyone, as I say, who is supporting the channel on Patreon or in any of the other ways. All the links are in the description by the way and thank you in advance if you're thinking about doing it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane see you next time bye for now